Okay, so um, we've got our action job done now, and uh, I've been sitting here. I've, I've gone over everything, cleaned everything up, and uh, I did come across in Adam's notes that uh, at times he does uh, work on the heel of the bolt just a little bit, and uh, so since we did, didn't do that, I'm going to go over, you know, that part right quick, and then we're going to get into uh, reassembly. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, look at what's done on on that part. So not a whole lot to it. Uh, this bolt is is hard as a rock, so you're going to need a diamond file and uh, the, the object here is to reduce the height of this heel that we talked about in the last segment um, not to remove it but to reduce the height of it so uh, we're going to go ahead and work on that and you are going to need a diamond file for this. Now I've already worked on this a little bit before I turned the camera on, so I'm not going to uh, do a whole lot more to it. And again, like I said, you just want to you want to take a little bit of metal off, and you can you can watch and, and keep your cut square. Because they've already got a little bit of a machine mark back here you can tell you know if what you're doing is pretty square or if it's not so that's enough there I'm gonna go ahead and get some sandpaper and one thing that that I do uh, that I didn't see in in right in uh, Adam's notes is is I'll take me a file and I'll go back here and cut a little bit on that and, and round that part because that's that's where it starts when it when it runs over the hammer uh, back there if you'll put just a little bit more of an angle to it and round that 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 helps you know your, your cycling be a little smoother so um, I'll show you what you do what I do, I take a, a this. Do you need a, a file that's narrow enough to, to fit up in there? And you know, just kind of angle that and round it a little bit more. Okay, so that's enough on that. I'm gonna go ahead and polish that up because, like I said, I worked on it a little bit before I turned the camera on. And the idea of this is not to film the whole thing but just show you what we do. These diamond files they cut pretty rough so you need to go back over that with some sandpaper and I just wrap some sandpaper. This is either 800 or 1000 grit. polish it back up. The diamond file leaves are pretty rough cut. I've never tried to file on one of these with a regular file, so I don't know how good it works. I wouldn't imagine it worked real good because this man is thing hard. Okay, so that's that's plenty good there on that and that gives you an idea of, of what we do and how we do it and that's the main thing so that's um, and like I said you don't want to take the heel off you want to just reduce it so we've done the hammer we've done everything and that's I've gone through these notes here we pretty much touched on everything that's done so um, oh, that was full Okay, so now um, I went back and forth um, when I decided to do this video on whether or not uh, 
I wanted to uh, touch on uh, reducing trigger pull. Uh, over the years on the forum, that's been kind of a touchy thing. There's 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 a group of guys, you know. There's 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 guys that that think you know a, a, a trigger job is is just one of the worst things that you can do to a gun. They 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 consider any any gun that's that's had a trigger job to be bubba, uh, so to speak. And um, and and to that, I would I would say. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a dangerous thing. I mean, I've bought a lot of guns over the years like a lot of guys have, and, and I've run across some that, that the trigger, you know, job is, is uh, left a lot to be desired and, and kind of made the, the gun dangerous. I mean, and, and, and I know guys, I know a guy personally that's real bad about messing with triggers, and, and I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to own a gun that he's messed with. Um, he just, he wants them to where you just touch it and, I mean, it's dangerous, you know, sooner or later. And the thing about, you know, somebody like that, um, that alters every trigger on every gun that he has, sooner or later, that guy's going to pass away. Someone's going to inherit that gun, and that, and, and it, it could be, whew, you know, it's, it's not something that you really want to think about. Um, every gun does not need a trigger on it that's as light as a, a dang bench rifle. Um, when you start getting down to like a, a pound, a pound and a half um, on a hunting rifle, it's just not necessary. Um, two and a half pounds, uh, three, somewhere in that area, that's that's really what you're going to want. And um, I ordered a trigger pull gauge, and it's not here, um, so we may have to redo this segment later on, um, but. But today I wanted to just show. I I took some time and I and I sat down and uh, I drew this this picture here. And I'm going to go ahead and, and turn the camera off of me now, where and and get it to where you can see uh, what I'm talking about here. Okay, now this uh, this right here is an illustration of of the hammer on a 336 Marlin, or and, and 1894 would be pretty much the same thing. Uh, and uh, let me turn it over. It's, this is upside down, but um, this this bottom claw here is going to be your safety claw. Uh, or hook, whichever they call. I think they're referred to actually in in Marlin lingo as a hook, uh, hammer hook. This is the one. This is this is the culprit right here. This is what you you're going for. And if if you look, if I had enough light and a good enough camera, I could hold this up here and you could see the uh, the angle of this hook. And when you're doing a trigger job on, on, on a marlin, this is what you're going for. You want to reduce the angle of this hammer hook. This is, like I said, this, this is showing factory right here. Uh, right here. And what you want to do is you want to file this down to about a 15 degree angle, no less than a 15 degree angle. Um, flattening this hook, the angle of this hook is, is what reduces trigger pull. Um, you can mess with the sear if you want to. I don't because you can get enough, 
you can reduce it, the trigger pull enough just by hitting this with a file a lick or two. And, and I mean a lick or two. It don't take much. Um, so that gives you an idea of uh, what it takes, what, what you do, and how you do it. So uh, with that, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change the angle on this to, and I'm going to show you, you know, how you do it. And let me, let me move the, the camera and get set up here. Okay. Um. And when I do this, I try to get down low, you know, where, where I can actually see what I'm doing. Now, this file right here, this is a this is an old points file, um, like mechanics used to use, and. Uh, it doesn't it don't get a lot a whole lot of meat at one time you don't want to use a, a diamond file on this I, I don't recommend that at all because you can you can screw up something and, and cause a problem uh, you want to go a little at a time and like I said this need you need to do this flat with the factory angle of the hook and uh, you don't want to get overzealous with it because you can screw something up in a hurry times I mean I've got a lot of light out here I've got two three foot LEDs and it's still not enough uh, okay that looks pretty good right there and, and like I said it don't take much So, with that, now we're going to go ahead and uh, start back with our with our reassembly of, of this gun. And this is the part that I like because after you after you've done all that work, you know you get to put everything back together and. Hopefully it's going to be like you like it. And I, I mean, I've been over all of this with the, with the rag and everything, and uh, you know, cleaned all the metal shavings out, and all that good stuff. So, uh, and uh, you can buy these at Tractor Supply. They sell a bag of them over there at the when you come in at the bargain bin. These little Q-tips, and boy, they really do a good job cleaning up everything. Um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. I use those things a lot. Okay, so first thing we want to do is uh, put in our our carrier.
Alright. And then a little oil on on that block really really helps a lot. And I I put a little bit of oil and just let it run down in there. Um, and I put a drop or two of oil on where, where the pivot screw is for the carrier also. Um, now your your hammer and uh, your lower plate, your lower tang and trigger assembly, that all has to go at one time. And uh, when I do this, I, I don't I don't try to line up anything but this first screw. Uh, initially, and then I worry about swinging it around and, and getting the the rest of them. Okay, so we got that now. And, well, now see, I made a rookie mistake right there. And that's, I didn't get this spring guide in there right. So that's going to be a do-over. And y'all can laugh at me, I guess, if you want to. Uh, but I bet I'm not the first guy that's ever done it or the last. All right, now. And don't run that screw all the way down. Don't run nothing all the way down uh, until you get everything put together. And uh, remember your two screws here. That the short one goes on the side, long one goes on the bottom. And you need to be careful and use the bit that fits right because you can screw, you can mess around and scratch your action all up. Um, well, I didn't put the load gate in. Huh. Good Lord. Okay, load gate. Come out of there. Okay. Let's just start over here. All right, now carrier load gate, and make sure there's a little RPP emblem. Make sure that you uh, get your load gate facing the right way. Um, Blue lock tight on that part. Um, might have got just a little bit too much on there. That's okay. Okay.
now we got it, I believe. You can go ahead and tighten this one up. Uh, there we go. Make sure it's swinging free and it ain't. Alright, now, lock lug. Swing your carrier back around. Lock lug. Little oil on it. Hammer. Long one goes on the bottom. Short one on the side. And once you get everything in, you can go ahead and tighten it down. I don't do that until I get everything Going. Now you want to use your push your safety button here and let the hammer come all the way down. Your mainspring on there. I never can do them with my hand. I just take a screwdriver. There it goes. get her action put back together and this needs to be um, this little old spring needs to be pretty much in the center there it goes I'll come just a little bit more just eyeball it and put it in the center all right there we go now now we can put our ejector and our boat back in. You want to make sure that your little guide uh, goes in that hole there on the side of the receiver. That's where your ejector rides. I see that What's, what's going on here is that uh, that lot lug is all the way up so you got to reach down in there with something and push it down. There we go. Drop or two oil in that. Oh yeah. 
Now we can run our, put our lever back in there. And your lever will go in the easiest if you if you got your boat going about halfway. It, it, you should just be able to stick it straight. Yeah, there we go. Now we got one of these nifty Ranger Point quick takedown screws here. There we go. Now we can try this out. Oh man, that is slick. Trigger's nice too. I wish I had a gauge, but it's okay. Alright, now, uh, the mag tube. We, uh, I went ahead and cleaned it out. I just used a shotgun uh, rod and, and clean up in here, make sure, you know, look through it. Make sure, because I've seen some pretty nasty stuff in these dirt and everything be up in there. And remember this tip tenon will go side to side for you. So if you're having trouble with your reassembly. Um, and normally on these these models like this you do have a little bit of trouble getting everything back together. There we go. If it don't work one way, try it another way. Now, there should be a follower laying here. That's going to go in. And then your spring. And one thing that I do that uh, I didn't see on Adam's list is I like to cut about five or six coils off the spring just to, to help, you know, with reloading and stuff. They don't need quite as much tension on the spring as what they got in the factory. Bend that around so it don't hook on it. And now you can run your spring up in there. And don't forget your forearm cap. All right. Now they knock these things down on there at the factory with a rubber hammer. Sometimes I find that they'll line up good. You usually have to squeeze real hard. It's I mean it's a it's a deal, but you can get
and again don't tighten nothing all the way up until I see normally you'll have to I mean you may have to take some wood off these because they do literally knock them on there with a rubber hammer I and mean, that's what I've heard Tom Ray say that's what they used to do so they fit pretty tight this one's going to go pretty good seems like I can just get this one started in here Tight. 